Rabbi, Rabbi, we need a question. What question do you have for me today? Okay, let's look at a question that came in today. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one because it's a little niche, but perhaps for those of you who have this challenge, this may be good for you. The question that came in is, what is the risk of marrying or dating someone less religious than me or not religious at all if I care about tradition? So I'll say that again. What is the risk of marrying or dating someone less religious than me or not religious at all if I care about tradition? This just came up. I can't believe this is the question of the day that's in your email inbox because I just did an event in Jerusalem and somebody stopped me afterwards and came up to me and asked exactly this. And she said, I'm actually dating somebody. I don't know if I should even call it that, but He's not really religious, and I am. And I want to celebrate Shabbat and the holidays and keep kosher. And he said he's spiritual, but he's not observant and and doing the things and practicing on a daily basis. And um, the mother happened to have been there also at the event. And the mother's looking at me like, oh, he's a no, like this is never going to work. And I said, no, actually, that's not true. It's not true. I said, tell me more information. How much do you know about him? Is he, he's spiritual. Is he open to, hey, instead of movies on a Friday night, can we just do Shabbat? We can go to a movie on a Wednesday. You know, is he open to, okay, our kids could go to a religious school. I don't mind, right? Is he open to, okay, so when we go out to eat, we go for kosher. It's not so bad. We're in Jerusalem. There's plenty of places that are kosher, right? Does that bother him or is he open to, you know, exploring what that might look like and feel like. And she said, I don't know. I said, oh, good. Date him. Figure it out. And don't dump him. Just experience that and explore it. And don't push. We're not like making him into something that he's not. We're just curious about what he wants because she told me there was chemistry. There was something there. She's like, Aliza, I don't know why. I don't know why. I went out on a date. I never feel this. And all of a sudden, I, I just felt something and, and I was so conflicted whether I, whether or not I should continue. How would you advise them? What would you say? I'm listening to you. At first, I was going to push back, but you said something really important that they went out and there was chemistry. So what right. happens when your heart feels a certain way, but your mind knows that it's wrong? The question is, is it wrong? Meaning... I don't know where he's, she was clear about her boundary, okay? Her boundary is Shabbat mandatory, kosher mandatory, Jewish schools mandatory. And he was in the, well, I don't do it, but I don't know if I want to do it. And I wouldn't only do it for you. I need to think about it. But like, give me a minute. Like, I just met you. I like you. And now I'm thinking about these concepts. And I don't want to get confused between I like you and I would do it for you rather than I would do it for me. It's a big ask. And there's two problems that I have with this. The first problem I have with it is that I think we're, too, that we're, we're worried about something way too far ahead. I'm not saying that it's not important because obviously for her, and let's say in your situation or in this, in this questioner's situation, it's a non-negotiable. That's why it's coming up. And this person, so you're, right. you're about to negotiate on a non-negotiable Right. So is it non-negotiable or is it negotiable? Okay. So I'm going to tell you another couple. This was an older couple, 50 plus, and she was Shomer Shabbat, Shomerit Shabbat and, and kosher. And, you know, she was, you know, in the modern Orthodox realm. And he was just like a nice Jewish boy who grew up going to, you know, synagogue just on the holidays. And, you know, kosher wasn't particularly anything to him. And they met and same thing. There was a connection. There was something, wasn't just a spark. It wasn't just a, you know, boom, like we've talked about. There was just a connection. There was something actually there where they, they did connect and they started to talk about it. And he said, well, I don't know if I want to do that or be that the whole time. And she was in a different life stage. She said, well, like I don't have little kids at home. Um, you know, I do like the Sabbath and if we're together, I'd love to do that. And, you know, they lived in different cities and he had family elsewhere. And she said, well, like when we're together, can we eat kosher, right? If you go out on your own, no judgment who you are and what you do. And when we're together, can we do Shabbat? And if you go anywhere else and do anything else like this is, you are who you are also. 
And they actually worked it out and they got married and they have this beautiful relationship. And he likes his Judaism, but he's not always living his Judaism. And she likes and lives her Judaism. And she has a willing partner who makes it work when they're around and they're together. And then when they're not, she's not judgmental. She's not saying, you must be this, you must do that right? And do it because that's what I think is right. She's saying, I understand you are where you are. And and thank you for making a safe space for our relationship so that we can hold that space together. And for them, it worked. But this is, again, a couple that's out of the stage of having young children and making other types of decisions that, that have a big impact. And I think that's a very important point because I'll tell you a story. Um, I'm dealing with a couple now and they're married for a little while. They met at a Shabbat dinner. She was not at all religious or observant, and he was modern Orthodox, mm-hmm. observant, non-negotiable Shabbat and kosher. And they hit it off, great chemistry. They dated for a while, and she decided to be religious for him. And they got married. Oh, okay. That's the wrong reason, though. Right. Okay? This other couple, he didn't become religious for her. He just said, I'm happy to observe the practices that are comfortable to you when we're together, but I'm not doing... I'm not becoming religious for you. I'm in that moment able to be present with you. Like, I again, I choose Shabbat dinner over the movies. That's okay. I think that she wanted marriage so badly that she was willing to compromise on something that should not have been compromised on. That's why I'm bringing this up. Right. It can't be, con- it, it, this is a non-negotiable. No, it's-, it's a non-negotiable. Don't start negotiating on it. Though I will say, and I'm generalizing here, because we can generalize here that in my experience, if it's the man that's religious and the woman that's not, it's a disaster. If it's the woman that's religious and the man that's not, there's a better chance for success. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And I have like already my head's like a dozen people. Yep, 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 yep. Same situation. And nope, 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 nope. Didn't work out. And, and, And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. Because at the end of the day, the things that matter are the things that are around the dining room table. And she, that's her domain, the dining room table. Right. right? She builds that matter. Of the home. Exactly. And, you know, oh, people say this whole thing, and I'm not going to go into the, to the tropes about religion and about, you know, what's important and not important. But, right. we, but I think an important element is that the reason why the synagogue is surrounded so much around men is because the home is surrounded so much about women. And so you could be very religious mm-hmm. and never go to synagogue. But you can't be very religious and not keep Shabbat and kosher. And those things specifically are things that are centered around the home. Right. And so I think that because that's important to her, you know, this guy was, this guy came to me and he said, I want to be kosher. And I said, did you ask your wife about it? So why don't you ask my wife? I said, because she's making the food. When you make the food, you can keep kosher. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow. That's powerful. And so I think you're spot on with that. I've seen it so many times in so many relationships, and I've sadly also seen the divorces that result from it being not in the right direction. That's right. So so let's go back. The story that I originally told, this was a woman saying, should I be okay with a man who is not observant, and how will that look? It could work. I said to her, but you must accept him. She said, but I want him to go to synagogue, and I want him to pray three times a day. I said, No. That's his mitzvah. If he wants to do that, he will do that. And you have to accept the fact that your children might not have him doing that and he might not be that role model. If you're not okay with that scenario, don't date him. If you're open to that, then you could date him. There's a possibility. And I'm not saying you should marry him. I'm just saying get more data and information. Ask the right questions. Dig in a little bit deep. Be real with yourself. Be real with him. And then we'll know the answer. And maybe it'll be in two dates or maybe it'll be in 10 dates. I don't know how long, but enough time that we know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this really boils down to a very important element of relationships, like a fundamental of relationships, that relationships need to be unconditional. If you're going to start loving Judaism more than you love your spouse, it's never going to work. If you're going to love something else besides your spouse, it needs to be unconditional. No strings attached. 100%. Yes. And so here's a great example, right? Oh, well, you know, people are coming to me all the time. One of the questions I get is, is oh, well, he, he didn't pray. He doesn't, I thought I was marrying someone who was, sorry. 
I thought I was marrying someone who was going to pray three times a day. Well, you don't get conditional love. Right. Right. So let's just summarize here for a second. What is the risk of marrying or dating someone less religious than me or not religious at all if I care about tradition? What is your answer in 10 seconds or less? I think that we have come to the conclusion there is a risk of divorce. There is a risk of growing apart. There is a risk of somebody doing it for you today, but not being willing to do it for you tomorrow. And there is a possibility that a relationship could work. And for us, we believe that if the woman is religious and the man is less religious or or on a different path, it's more likely to work than the reverse. This is great. Thanks again. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. Send your questions and we'll get to them. <laughs>